Joshua Information Charlie. Weather at 1200 Zulu. Wind 020. At 5. Visibility 9 or miles. Sky clear. Temperature minus 7. Dew point minus 8. Altimeter 3025. Approach our nav runway 30. Landing and departing runway 30. Runway surface condition. Runway 1230. Dry. Valid from February 6 at 1137 Zulu to February 6 at 1937 Zulu. Friction index runway 1230 not reported. Inform ATC that you have information, Charlie. Oh, should I make the uniform tower trade out or rate right turnout for Edenville? Wind 020 at 5 from Bravo. Clear takeoff runway 30. Edenville traffic, Mike Fitch uniform clear of runway 13, backtracking 26 for the apron. Edenville. We're well lit. You guys, we did one for another guy here. Yep. And like he was taxiing out, and I was taxiing, or he was taxiing, and I was taxiing out. And he recognized me for who was. And I said, you know, commented, or try your lights. And he tried it. Like, even at, you know, daylight, whatever, it's, they're almost there. Excellent. So, good job. I guess that's all the wires we need. Is this specific to the 172? The tips are? Yep. Yeah. So it's, it's specific to this plane with the uh, skull cut. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So there's our harness. It's even the terminals are in there. And the switches. And the circuit breakers. A little different circuit breakers than we're using, but make them fit or change them out. Stiffeners. For these will hold them on. They can go along the edge here yep. and keep it more stiff. Uh, they, they're better than the original Cessna ones, for sure. The original Cessna ones by now are all beat up, so that's a good thing. Some of them didn't even have the original Cessna ones. I don't know if you do. No, so uh, this is this, this is from Steam, so it's the same company that actually made the ones that are on there with the, with the small Yeah, part. okay, yeah. So it wires, that'll be probably a plug that will go on there. Okay. Nice transformer to keep things cool with a bright LED light. So they look nice. Let's see if we can do it without scratch. So, so we'll get them fit up, Paul will paint them. So I complained about the cost. I mean, because it does seem kind of ridiculous to me. And then and then I was complaining to Julie about how much they cost. And she's like, will it make us safer? Then shut up. <laughs> 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 Although she still wants a new seat. So eventually, <laughs> eventually, I've, eventually, I've got to get Julie a seat. I want Julie to have a new seat too. They look like crap. Yes. Okay, so it fits. Now I need to take the tape and tape off the line of where the old wingtip fit on, and then we can use that to measure where the holes are so that we can drill the holes to hold this on. 
Okay, so we're drawing X's. Can you see it from above? This is the trick that, that no one that I should hide. <laughs> uh, I think somewhere in uh, I'm not sure what the manufacturer is, but this is a, uh, an instruction they have on how to find these holes. And so, you know, over the years, I've done it knowing that instruction and had a number of people say, whoa, that's a great idea. So I just want to point out this is not my idea. <laughs> it's someone else's, but I'll own it and pretend at least I know what it is. And it's mostly accurate. We'll use like a smaller drill bit going in and then hopefully line it up pretty good. And usually it works out. I've never scrapped the tip yet. Oh, it fits in there nicely. Look at how snug that is. A lot of times you get a little gap in there. Yep. There's a slight gap, but that looks good. And so now I think the trick's gonna be, first of all, getting straight. So I made the little sight line, right? So this line here was just a sight so we could see where we are versus the tip. Right, so we're, you know, maybe five eighths there. And back here, maybe about five eighths. Jeez, it lined right up against there. And there's a little cut out there. Actually, it fit in there perfect. These things fit nice. And so now the next concern would be on this top plate, and I'm not sure we can see from there. We don't want the screw head to sort of sit on the metal. We'd like the screw head to be here. Right, so I'm going to see if I can line that up properly. Worst case, we, I guess we cut a little groove out of that. The instructions weren't clear on what to do about a little situation like this. I'm just gonna make a couple here to see if I'm close, and then we'll go around the bottom and make sure it's the same, and then we'll do all of them. Start drilling some holes and click in. And then Paul can have some fun with them. <laughs> okay, so I'm laughing because just yesterday, uh, a channel that I watch uh, called Fort Nine made a drawing box for his motorcycle gear. And he spent probably five minutes of the video fighting with the tape exactly the same as Chris is. I bring my little guy and he's got smaller fingers and he'll pull it on my hands. Here, Dad, let me do that. And it, so I guess when I was a kid, they didn't have stickers. And there we go. Oh, yeah, we got this. <laughs> I don't think this foil tape's anything special. I think it's actually duct tape, like actual for your ducts at home that picked up a clean pair. Now the other is how far this metal plate is. We'll figure that out too. How far fore and aft do we want it to go? We'll just see, I'm not sure. They didn't say much about that either. So, but we transfer our lines like that and like that. That's where our pole should be. All right, so now uh, I'm just gonna grab a piece of the other trim. Oh, there's something down there. Either I missed the wing or I hit the hole. Missed the like hole. That. Hit the hole. Okay. Well, that'll hold the top now. We're steady. And now I'm going move down to the bottom so I can get it. Well, I can still do that. I'll just do the top. Now I'm going to do the bottom. Get two on the outside as well. The, the All-Star game was pretty good, actually. kind of like that format. Like other years, you watch it, and that's what they kept talking about is, like, you know, they just don't go out to play. Like, they go out to fuck around, and, you yeah. know, and it's their week off. And so that was nice to see them, like, given her. They, they, they actually, it was a, a fast-moving. The, the game that I watched was really fast-moving. It was great. 
didn't fully understand Justin Bieber jumping around behind me. Oh. <laughs> like, could you wear a more obnoxious coat? Like, Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, Justin, if you're watching. <laughs> I don't know, is Justin Bieber a fan of the channel? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Who isn't? Okay, so it's a couple weeks later. Chris is going through the instructions for the wiring, and we got the wingtips back from Paul, who has painted them red and silver. Nice. Yeah, he did a good job. And uh, I, like, I like that he painted the inside here silver for a little bit of extra reflection. Mm. Although I'm, I'm given to understand they're really bright. So Ben's opening up the wings. Be running wire and putting in switches. Here are the switches here, didn't we? here yeah right and so the idea that the other one might be two or three feet longer to make the cabin might be a good idea so maybe yeah. we should get this to where it needs to be and then before we and go then, slicing her yeah pretty straightforward connections it's pretty straightforward connections we got three wires here and they give us every part like so that's the exact number of those i need the solder everything it's very straightforward uh, and so far we haven't damaged anything so we're good Really, we're coming along here. <laughs> so that's it for this episode. We've got the new wing tips on. Um, I was going to do this at night so I could show you how bright they were in the dark, but that was not my primary purpose for putting these wigwag lights on. Uh, when we redid Mike Victor uniform, we changed out the landing, the existing landing and taxi light with LEDs. And as you can see, they are incredibly bright changed all the lights to LEDs. Um, incredibly bright. But last summer I came into a couple of airports that are Nordo, no radio, grass strips. Coming in on short final, I see someone at the hold short line. Um, they don't see me, they pull it onto the runway to take off. I had to do a couple of, of go-rounds, um, full power, pull up, go round, get out of their way, because they didn't see me. They didn't have a radio, they didn't see me. So in the interest of safety, I thought, well, a wigwag light. So I tried a wigwag light on the existing taxi and landing light, but they're so close together, it's not as noticeable as putting on the wigwag lights at the wingtips. So the wingtips now have a taxi light and a landing light and then the wigwag light. And hopefully with this wigwag light, it gives me just that extra level of safety um, when I'm coming into airstrips that are Nordo, non-towered. Um, even here at a towered airport like Oshawa, I think it's gonna be helpful just to let everybody know that I'm there. Besides that, they look kind of cool. I saw them last summer at Oshkosh. Every plane that came in with those flashing, I thought that's pretty cool. So thanks for stopping by. See you again soon. You're still here. Since you're still here, let me tell you about Give Hope Wings. Um, last year, 2023, I flew in a charity fundraiser called Give Hope Wings uh, that raises money for a charitable organization called Hope Air. And you, my viewers, uh, donated $27,000 um, and really changed some lives. It made a difference. You made a difference in people's lives. So Hope Air is a charity that, uh, that works in Canada and they provide free flights and lodging to people that live in the more remote parts of Canada um, if they need to get to somewhere like Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, something like that, a larger urban center in order to receive some sort of care, cancer treatment, uh, different types of operations, that sort of thing that, they, that can't be done in their own community. The health care is covered by the government of Canada. It is free. It's part of our universal health care. But getting yourself to that health care can be an incredible burden for people who live in those more remote communities where um, driving isn't practical, 
or driving isn't possible because we have a lot of communities in Canada that are fly in or boat in only. So that's where Hope Air comes in. Um, they pair private pilots like myself with small aircraft to fly to these communities, pick people up and bring them either directly to the larger urban center or to a larger urban center where commercial um, traffic is available, commercial flights are available. And then from there, they cover the commercial flight to the larger center. Uh, something that I definitely believe in, um, having lived in some of those smaller communities in my younger years, I know how difficult it is, how isolating it is, uh, and that you, you cannot get out when you need to sometimes. Um, so I would encourage you, please, if you can, I will drop the link below in the description box. Um, take a look into Hope Air, and if you're able to, um, please uh, help out and donate. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.